Welcome to this Minecraft starting guide. In this video, we'll be taking a comprehensive look at the essential steps to survive in your new world. Whether you're a complete beginner or a seasoned player looking to refresh your skills, this guide will provide you with the knowledge to get started in Minecraft. Before we begin though, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you won't miss any of our upcoming Minecraft content. With that out of the way, let's jump right into it. To help you navigate the video, here are timestamps for the different chapters, so feel free to jump to specific sections that interest you. Chapter 1. Creating a new world The first step in your Minecraft journey is to create a new world. Before you jump into creating your world, take some time to configure the general settings. This will affect difficulty, world type and other aspects of your gameplay. The seed is a unique code that determines the layout of your world. You can enter a specific seed to generate a predefined world or leave it blank to generate a random one. Data packs are optional mods that can add new features, challenges or tweak the game mechanics. There are many data packs available online so you can find the one that suits your preferences. I have included a few of my favorite data packs in the description down below. Chapter 2. The first day. Your first day in Minecraft is crucial for survival. You have about 10 minutes before nightfall. Once you spawn in your world, start by chopping down trees to acquire wood. Next up, make a crafting table and get yourself a wooden pickaxe. With this pickaxe, either dig down or find a cave with some stone exposed. Mine enough cobblestone to craft some tools and a furnace. This also marks the end of using your wooden tools. Surviving in Minecraft all depends on food, so finding or making a sustainable food source is of great importance. Breaking grass can drop seeds, which can be used to grow wheat next to water. Also be on the lookout for any animals, as they can provide a great source of food as well. Try not to kill all of them however, that way you can make an animal farm later on. If possible, kill 3 sheep to craft yourself a bed for the night. This way you don't have to worry about fighting mobs yet. If you have any time left, build yourself a simple start house. It can be made with wood, but dirt will do the trick as well. Chapter 3. Nightfall Once the sun sets, hostile mobs like zombies, skeletons and creepers will start spawning, making it dangerous to explore without proper protection. This is why securing a shelter before nightfall is crucial. Nighttime is actually an ideal time to mine. Mobs are less likely to spawn underground and you can focus on collecting valuable resources like iron, coal and even diamonds. One of the most important rules to remember when mining is don't dig straight down. Digging straight down is a common mistake among new players and it's highly dangerous. It's easy to fall into lava or into deep pits. Your first focus should be to get iron. Iron is typically found underground between Y level minus 8 and Y level minus 56, but can also be exposed in caves on the surface. Aim to get about 7 to 10 raw iron. Along the way you will most likely encounter coal as well. Always take it with you as it's used for many things such as making torches, smelting ores and cooking food. Although diamonds are the rarest ore in the overworld, you don't need an abundance of them to progress in the game. 5 diamonds will suffice for crafting a diamond pickaxe which you will need later on. You can find the most diamonds at Y-59 just above bedrock. After finishing your mining adventure, get back to the surface and smelt your raw iron into ingots. The first thing you want to craft with your iron is a shield. The shield will help you block incoming attacks from hostile mobs like skeletons. Next up is to craft a bucket and get water. A water bucket can be used to put out fires, fill cauldrons and absorb damage while falling. If you still have iron left, craft yourself whatever armor you can, but give priority to an iron chestplate as it gives you the most protection. Chapter 4. Exploration Once you got a basic shelter and gathered essential resources, it's time to explore the vast world of Minecraft. Exploration opens up new possibilities for finding resources, villages, structures and even hidden treasures. First thing you want to look for are villages. They are populated by friendly mobs who can trade with you, providing valuable items and resources. They also offer pre-built houses that can serve as a starting point for your base. 
Villagers can sell you various items, from food and tools to enchanted armor. You can trade with them using emeralds, which can be obtained by trading with other villagers or by mining emerald ore. Villagers often have farms with crops and livestock, providing a steady source of food as well. Next up are the desert temples. Desert temples are rare structures that hold valuable loot, including golden apples, emeralds and enchanted books. They are guarded by traps and hostile mobs, so proceed with caution. Shipwrecks are structures found in the ocean that can contain chests with valuable loot including iron, gold and even enchanted armor and tools. Chapter 5. The Nether Let's go and explore the nether now. The nether is a dangerous dimension in Minecraft, filled with challenging mobs and hostile environments. However, it also holds valuable resources like quartz, blaze rods and lots of gold. To enter the nether, you'll need to build a nether portal using 10 obsidian blocks and the flint and steel. Obsidian is a rare and difficult to obtain material typically found in lava pools. You can only mine it with a diamond pickaxe. After building the portal like this, you can light it with your flint and steel and enter the nether. The nether has a few different mobs. One of them is the piglins. They are generally peaceful towards players wearing gold armor or carrying gold ingots, so make sure to wear at least one piece of golden armor when you enter the nether. You can also find some useful stuff in the nether, like quartz, a common ore that is an excellent source of XP. There is also an abundance of gold nuggets to be found which can be made into gold ingots. In terms of structures, there is the nether fortress. They are large structures and are home to powerful mobs like blazes and wither skeletons. Fortresses also contain valuable loot chests that may contain blaze rods, nether ward and other rare items. Chapter 6. Farms Let's move back to the overworld and talk about farms. Farms are essential for providing a steady supply of food and resources. They allow you to grow crops for food or harvest animals for meat and other valuable items. Let's start with the animal farms. Cows provide milk, leather and steak, while sheep provide wool for crafting beds, carpets and other items. Chickens provide meat for cooking and pigs provide pork chops. Another useful item to farm is sugarcane. It can be grown next to water sources. Break the top part of a sugarcane to harvest it and it will grow back over time. Sugarcane is used for crafting paper, which is essential for crafting books and maps. Chapter 7. Enchanting To tie perfectly into the books and paper, let's talk about enchanting. Enchanting is an advanced mechanic that allows you to enhance the properties of your tools and armor, making them much more powerful and durable. To enchant items, you need an enchantment table, which can be crafted by using 4 obsidian blocks, 2 diamonds and a book. You need to craft 18 bookshelves and place it around the enchantment table in this way. Each bookshelf increases the maximum enchantment level. Here are a few good enchantments for tools. And these are good enchantments for armor. Remember, you can always undo enchantments by using a grindstone, but keep in mind that some XP will get lost in the process. If you made it this far, you're well on your way to surviving in your world of Minecraft. As you progress, you will unlock more advanced mechanics, explore new biomes and discover even more valuable resources. You can for example try and beat the game by fighting the Ender Dragon, Wither and Warden. The possibilities are endless. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments and I'll try to answer them all. Also, let me know if you want me to make a more detailed tutorial, but for now, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video.